G'day Curd Nerds, today we're going to be making Chevra. <laughs> Well, as you can see, I'm all set up. I've sanitized my gear. I'm ready to pour my milk in and I'm ready to get going. So let's get on with it, shall we? So I've got my Caprilac milk. This is the goat's milk that I found that was uh, non, um, that was part, just pasteurized uh, and it wasn't uh, ultra pasteurized. So I've got four liters of milk here. So the ingredients are four liters or four quarts of goat's milk, a quarter of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture, two drops of calcium chloride, two drops of liquid rennet, and 1% of salt by weight of the final cheese. Uh, basically, we bring the milk up to temperature and we add the starter culture. Uh, we add just a tiniest little bit of rennet and uh, I'm gonna add a tiny little bit of uh, calcium chloride as well, just to help it set uh, just in case um, the pasteurization was a little bit higher in temperature than it should have been. But anyway, we'll see how that goes. And uh, hopefully, in about 24 hours time, it should set. So, just to get that out of the way. Then what happened there? Alright, so I'll bring it up to temperature now. Clip on my trusty thermometer. So we're looking for 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, currently it's at 12. So this will take some time. So it needs to come up to uh, 25 degrees Celsius. The Thermi pan is just showing 25 there, which is spot on, uh, which is fantastic. I'll turn the heat off. I directly heated this milk. Uh, there's no issue doing that with such low temperatures. Um, so we don't have to worry about it too much. Now the sides of the pot are just warm so we don't have to go overboard there and the uh, clip-on thermometer on the side just says 25 as well. The 25 degrees Celsius is 77 Fahrenheit for those who are wondering. Okay so I'm going to put my Starter culture, I'm using the uh, Mad Millie Mesophilic here. You can use uh, MO30 or MA11 for Chevra. Now it says use, uh, the recipe I'm using is out of the, uh, I haven't modified it at all. This is out of the 200 easy homemade cheese recipes by Deborah Amrain Boyles. A uh, boys, sorry Deborah, if I mispronounce your name. Uh, second edition, uh, great little book. Uh, it's got a lot of great recipes in it, uh, including some cook cooking recipes. So now it says use quarter of a teaspoon of uh, mesophilic culture, which means in this case two sachets. Let's get the things open here. Uh, that one's no good. That one's gone off. The reason I can tell it's gone off is because all of the culture has stuck to the inside of the packet. And that's a good sign that it's no good. And same has happened for this one. Alright, so back again. I've got some good starter cultures this time. These ones are dry. They're not stuck to the inside of the packet. So you know they're okay. Uh, so they're free flowing. And they're in date. The other ones were in date as well, but uh, obviously no good. So that's a eighth of a teaspoon. And here's another one. And let's have a look at this one. Yep, that one's okay as well. So that's another eighth of a teaspoon. So that's a full quarter of a teaspoon of mesophilic starter culture. So I'm just gonna oh, just slowly take my spoon out there. Should have done that beforehand. And I should have taken that out beforehand. Put the lid on and we'll let that rehydrate for five minutes. Where's Siri? Where are you, Siri? 
Bit disorganised today. Set timer for five minutes. Okay, five minutes and counting. Thanks, Siri. So there we go, the five minutes is up. So let's get rid of that. I don't know what that is. Something not quite right. Righto, so we'll give that a stir just to rehydrate it now. And somehow there's a bit of fluff that's got in there. I don't want that in my cheese. See beauty of cheese making outside on the patio. <laughs> right, there we go. Give it a stir. Just check the temperature again. Twenty four point nine, that'll do. Okay, so it's ready for the next stage. Just stir that in. No ripening period. Well, there is. There's one big ripening period for this cheese, and that's the twenty four hours. So just basically stirring. Let's get all that culture mix through. Alright, simple as that. Now for the tricky part. So I'm going to take a teaspoon of water, but uh, sorry, a tablespoon of water, and before I do that, I'll just unscrew the dripper part of my rennet. Uh, before I do that, I'll do my calcium chloride first. So I'm going to take a tablespoon of water, and I'm going to put two drops of calcium chloride and I'm going to pop my teaspoon of water into my milk. Give that a quick stir. Probably day for cheese making. It's a marmy 17 degrees Celsius here. Got all the lights on outside because it's so dark. Right. So, now we do the same with the rennet. Now, in, in the recipe in the book I'm using, it says one drop of rennet. Now, that her book refers to a um, IMCU of uh, 280 to 300. Now, my rennet is only 200, so I have to compensate, so I'll add an extra drop. One, two. Oop, knew that was going to happen. There we go. As you can see, not a lot of rain up for four litres of milk. What, what will happen is that the milk will curdle mainly because of the, uh, the starter culture reacting on the uh, lactose within the cheese, uh, what's up, within the cheese, within the milk. Uh, the rennet will just give that a little bit of a, a kick along. That's all that will do. And leaving it for 24 hours at such a low temperature I'll keep that inside in the kitchen, um, out of, uh, in a draft free area, so I'm just going to put it right at the back of the stove. The stove won't be on or anything. Uh, the kitchen's usually between 18 and 20 degrees Celsius, room temperature anyway. Uh, we don't have any heating on in the house. So it'll stay that warm overnight, right, that's enough for the stirring, that's it. So it'll just stay out of the draft plate a draft free area that's it we'll come back tomorrow in 24 hours and see what's happened to our cheese hopefully it's firmed up uh, and then i'll be able to put it into a draining bag and uh, we'll proceed on with the next step see you then so as you can see here i'm just using a skimmer to ladle the curds into 
a butter muslin lined cheesecloth. Now the butter muslin was sanitised in boiling water for five minutes and just scoop it out. You can see the whey is very clear and you can see that the curds are so white compared to cow's milk. The reason that is is that goat's milk doesn't have any beta carotene in it so that's why it stays nice and white. So what we're doing here is just folding up opposite corners and we're going to tie them into a knot so we can hang them like a bag. So there we go. So we can drip. Now we're not going to hold that there with our hand for hours on end. We've got something craftier. So I've got an old broom handle. So we're going to hang, hang that uh, and we'll allow that to drain for six to seven hours to get the right consistency. Make sure you pop a pot underneath. Okay. Now we've been draining the uh, chevre for uh, chevre. We've been draining the goat <laughs> cheese for six, uh, nearly seven hours now. So I'm just going to untie the knots that I put in it, and we're going to weigh it uh, because this is a necessary step. Because we've got to figure out how much salt to add. We're going to add one percent salt. Uh, by weight of cheese. Now, even though this looks like table salt, it's not. It's actually cheese salt that I've put in there. Now, chev or chevre, well, it depends on what I'm going to say. It looks lovely and white and creamy. In fact, it looks absolutely delicious. I'll just tip it out into the bowl. First of all, I'll zero the scales. There we go. So I'll be able to make all sorts of things with this. Logs and dips and mix things in with it. There we go, that's all. got it all out. So that's 1.5 kilograms from four litres of milk so 1% of 1.5 kilogram one, or um, 1,500 uh, so 1% 1 of that is 15 grams I think just do some basic maths Just to make sure I'm right. Minus 1%. It's 15 grams. Okay, so I need 15 grams of salt. There we go. Which looks about like a tablespoon and a half. So I'll just get that out of the way. So I'll just sprinkle that over the top. Now it looks like a lot, but it's not. So I'll now mix that through. Now this will also firm up in the fridge uh, a fair bit because this is still at room temperature. And once it firms up in the fridge, this is when I'll be able to make logs out of it and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to leave this overnight with some um, plastic wrap over the top or a tea towel over the top and uh, do some fancy things with it tomorrow. And that salt's all stirred through. Oh, I'm going to have a taste. Oh, that is to die for. Tangy. It's just a, t and a hint of salt. Smooth though, I tell you. Oh, 
something time is going off left right and center god knows what that timer was for hope it wasn't anything important there we go there's our chevra beautiful you can see there let's taste that again mm, absolutely delightful okay like I said I'll let that firm up overnight and we'll do something with that tomorrow when I get home from work very exciting stuff lovely easy cheese to make this one anyway there we go yeah so overnight in the fridge it did firm up a little bit so uh, what we did was toasted some sourdough bread and you can see it spreads really easily it's a lot firmer than what it was yesterday after i put the salt in it, it was quite runny and uh, it has firmed up so it does look amazing and uh, let me tell you it tastes equally amazing it has the um, the tang of a, a goat's uh, ch a proper goat's cheese well it is a proper goat's cheese i suppose <laughs> um, but homemade uh, slightly salty but it it doesn't have a bite and it is so smooth there's no graininess in the texture it is just one simply amazing goat's cheese i highly recommend that you make this version of a chevre or sherve or however you want to say it it's just one amazing cheese Don't forget that you can subscribe to the channel to get more cheesy videos like this one and that you can buy all your cheese making gear and kits over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au Thanks for watching Curd Nerds and I'll see you next time.